So, uh, yeah, I see people settling in here. So we're going to we're gonna start with a prayer, and I'm going to introduce Lori Gifford. Lori Gifford is a member of the staff at the Power of Love Ministry, and she's here volunteering to uh, support this service. I very much appreciate her. And um, we also have GJ, who's a member of the staff, and he's working behind the scenes to answer emails and, and help people get online. And uh, Lori is uh, one of our certified counselors, and she also does teaching in this ministry. And she is a beautiful and brilliant person that I really consider to be one of the great treasures of people I know in my life. And so I'm very happy she's here with us today. So Lori's going to start us off with a prayer. Oh, just taking a nice deep breath and placing a hand or hands on our heart if we choose to. Breathing into our light. And breathing out and sharing our light. So grateful for all the simple pleasures we get to experience during our days. Grateful for the moments we get to give and receive loving kindness. opening up to the messages that spirit has to share with each one of us today, enjoying the love, enjoying the fellowship and enjoying the music. So grateful and thankful for the ease and grace of technology coming our way today. And for all the opportunities we get to shine our light in the world knowing that spirit has our back, knowing that all we have to do is say yes and allow ourselves to be led, allowing ourselves to accept however we show up because we are beautiful divine children of God. Breathing again into our light And then breathing out and sharing that light as we share all the benefits from what we receive today with everyone in the world because we are one with them. In grace and gratitude, we allow it to be, and so it is. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Lori. And uh, I, I'd like to introduce Faith Rumor, uh, who I've known for a very long time. And I feel very blessed to have Faith as a friend and um, uh, a colleague. And uh, I've done many, many, many Sunday services with Faith along the way. And, and uh, she has provided uh, profoundly inspiring music to many services that I've spoken at and it's been quite a blessing and she is an active participant in the agape community a licensed practitioner there and she also is uh, an amazing voice coach voice teacher to um, folks in Hollywood and uh, she has wonderful programs that really support people in speaking up, speaking out, singing, and uh, she's just a, a really gifted, gifted, beautiful person. And what what are you going to sing for us, Faith? Uh, um, this first song is a, a song I didn't write, but it's a song called "It's All Right" by Phil Roy. And uh, I thought it was really great for what we're all going through right now. And uh, then the second song I'm going to sing is a song that I wrote called Perfect. Okay, great. Are you ready? Yes. Okay.
forget what you don't have forget that you don't just forget it forget that you're afraid forget that you are just forgive it Forget you feel alone. We all feel alone. Think about it. It's all right. When it ain't easy, it's just like. Don't worry, it's all right. The deaf applause, you know, <laughs> for the Zoom Zoomers. Ah, oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I really appreciate that so much. And I love the part about we all get lost in the journey. We all get lost along the way. We get distracted. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Yeah. We're not alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was very comforting. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, so now we're going to uh, have uh, some inspiration from Maureen, who uh, is 
she, she is she is a, wrote a spiritual vixen's guide to an unapologetic life and she has been doing the 365 live lessons the course of miracles lesson she's a course of miracles teacher i've gotten to know maureen from doing conferences and retreats and things like that together and so we we are part of this course of miracles community now for many years and i know maureen to be an inspired teacher and speaker and i'm so excited to hear you today maureen thanks for joining us here sundays with spirit See if we can get you unmuted. I can't seem to help you with that. Can somebody, there she goes. Hi. <laughs> My husband would love to have that button for me. <laughs> just need to mute me every once in a while. Thank you so much, Reverend Jennifer. I just really appreciate your um, inviting me here. I'm very, very grateful to be here with your community and at such an auspicious time. And I just wanted to send love out to everyone wherever you are and however you are, like the song says, you're not alone. And we are all in this together. And right now it feels like there's a major reboot going on and uh, a grace period where we get to assess our lives. And many of us have been praying this prayer of a new way of being and a world that works for everyone. So it shouldn't be too much surprise that things are shifting because prayer works. Um, but we do have a, a new experience. We're coming out of the chrysalis together. And in order to be open to new experiences, we get to dig up the old tent poles and burn them in the fire and allow ourselves to walk unencumbered and step by step and decision by decision back into love. And if we want to have a world of peace, uh, we have to start to maybe sharpen our spiritual tools a little bit. So that's why I wanted to talk about spiritual tools. I do believe that spiritual tools are the way that we will cut ourselves free from our stagnant and selfish and sometimes the belief in, in scarcity. I think that the, the belief that thoughts that are based in scarcity beliefs are one of the most tragic that can happen for us. So uh, we might be willing to put down our distractions and lean towards consciousness with all of our weight at this point until we're lifted by love. And this is where we are right now. This is what is happening. And uh, it's why dedicating ourselves to sharpening our spiritual tools is going to be, I hope, quite helpful for all of us. Um, so I love spiritual tools. I know Re Reverend Jennifer is all about the spiritual tools. And I grew up in New Jersey with a father who also loved tools. He was a real tool guy. And he had, uh, he had a lot of tools and rituals. One of his rituals was that he would, he would get us all into the van. There was eight kids in my family. And we would drive around the neighborhood. And I'm pretty sure he did this to get us out of my mom's hair. But he would drive us around the neighborhood and he would point out to different houses. And he would say, you see that house? I turn them on. You see that house? I turn them on. And I never really knew what the heck he was talking about. Um, but what he was saying was that he had taken the electrical wires in the house and he had figured them out in such a way that he brought light and warmth into that home. I thought that I was a daughter of a light worker, but really I was the daughter of an electrician. <laughs> My dad was an electrician. And, and because he was an electrician, he had a lot of tools. And he had this whole room in the basement that was designated just to his tools. And the workroom was forbidden for all of us. So because it was forbidden and for many other reasons, it took on all the markings of a haunted house. You know, it had this creepy door that when you pushed it open, it moaned and whined. And when you went into the room, it was like covered with years, decades of cobwebs and spiders because nobody ever cleaned my dad's workroom. And it was lit by this very jaundiced lighting of this single raw bulb hanging ominously in the middle of the room. And I remember it felt like a secret interrogation room and it was filled with these like shiny sharp objects. And sometimes my sisters and I would go in there on a dare, but it was very, um, 
brave of us to do that because someone usually got pushed to the side and then we'd all run out and shut the door behind them. So it was a horrible thing that we did as children. Um, so, but these were his tools and I didn't have much appreciation for my father's tools. They didn't really mean anything to me. But one day my father started taking his tools out to the backyard and my seven siblings and I followed him out to the backyard and he brought his saw and his hammer and he started cutting wood and he took the wood and he started hammering it together and he created this a frame. It was a wooden frame and he laid the frame down on the lawn and then he kicked off the mother of all tools which was even too big to sit in his workroom. So it sat in our, our driveway. It was this behemoth piece of metal, this big chunky piece of, of, of a tool. And he turned it on and it roared and it spun and it was this cement mixer. And this was startling for us kids. We we're like, wow, it does something. Like none of us had ever seen it in action before. And my father began to make buckets of cement and he would bring it from the cement mixer and he would pour it into this frame and uh he began to you know get going back and forth and us kids were like what are you doing and he told us i'm i'm creating a platform and then right when he was just about finished with with the platform he leveled it out and he called each of my siblings to him and one at a time he took our hands and he pressed our hands into the wet cement. And I think we all felt like we were famous people at the Mad Chinese Theater in Hollywood because this was such a special moment, like he was immortalizing us in cement. And all of my siblings and I stood back as my dad began one child at a time pressing us into the cement. And when it was done, we just stared at it in awe. And it seemed like the most magnificent cre creation that any of us had ever been a part of creating together. And in that moment, I realized and understood how much and why my father cherished his tools. So on their own, these tools were worth very little, but in his hands, they could cause something so beautiful to come into creation. Recently, my son has taken up sewing and he's been making masks and he's been hand sewing them. And he had a project in school where he was supposed to make a doll. So he was hand sewing the doll. And I suggested to him that maybe we should buy a sewing machine because he seemed to be really into it. And he said, mom, a sewing machine is like $200. And I said, yeah, but it would really increase your ability to create. And it might afford you to, um, you know, a little bit more ease than hand sewing everything. Uh, so we went ahead and purchased the sewing machine and he began creating all types of things and he started out with masks and then he ended up with a puppet and then he went ahead and created this sort of dress. So it's kind of cool when you have the right tools, right? So the tools of my father and the tools of my son are not really magnificent unless they're held in the willing hands of a participant. And this is the truth for spiritual tools as well. On their own, spiritual tools are just hollow suggestions and theory at best. But in the hands of a willing artisan, spiritual tools can help to create a life that's good and beautiful and holy and easy and more graceful. And they'll take us to places that we didn't know that we could even go. So what is a spiritual tool? A spiritual tool is anything that brings you closer to God. So anything that brings you closer to an aspect of God, like peace or freedom or joy, you already probably use a lot of spiritual tools yourself. Uh, the short list is contemplation and meditation and prayer and chanting and tapping and creating mandalas and doing art. 12 steps is a great uh, spiritual tools. If you define a spiritual tool as anything that brings you closer to God, anything that brings you closer to peace and joy and freedom, you might find yourself with a pretty eclectic spiritual toolbox because there's a lot of things that bring us pretty closer to peace and joy and freedom. There may be things that we hadn't even considered to be spiritual tools. Uh, I think you could also take anything that you're thinking might be a spiritual tool and you could put it through the filter of A Course in Miracles and say to the tool or the activity that you're devoting your days to, you could say, you know, what is the purpose of this? You know, does this bring me closer to peace and joy and freedom? And I think that as you and as we continue to take that type of assessment, we might find our priorities shifting. 
So I could go over some of the tools, but really the way to sharpen any tool is the way to sharpen every tool. So that's the good news about spiritual tools. So how do you sharpen a spiritual tool? Well, first off, you use it. <laughs> you use it early and you use it often. Early can have many different interpretations. So you might think early in life or early in the day, early everywhere. You use it early and often everywhere. So first of all, for early, just start now. Start developing your own spiritual toolbox and practices and don't tarry and don't wait and don't dawdle and make haste to God. Back in the day, uh, when I was in California, and I'm pretty sure I shared this story with um, Reverend Jennifer before, um, I was, uh, I was, I went to see one of my spiritual teachers, and I asked this teacher what their practice was. And I was in this very large group of students, and I was a very young, new practitioner. And I really felt like my question was asked in earnest and sincerity. But the teacher blew up at me. And this teacher was like, what do you mean? What's my spiritual practice? Like, why would you ask me that? And the whole room felt like it turned on me like I was a town idiot. And I felt like I, I, I really did want to know, like, what, what was your spiritual practice? And I, I felt like I fell in on myself. And every time that I thought about that moment in my life, I felt like I was washed with shame again. And so I thought, uh, Finally, one day I went to my internal teacher and I asked the question, like, what was the purpose of that exchange? Like, why did that happen? And Spirit said to me, Maureen, you're asking the wrong question. That's why. You know, you're asking the question because you want the cliff notes to somebody else's faith. You know, you don't want to go to God. You want to go to some tired old ass recipe that never that's never going to work for you. So when I heard that in my mind, I thought, yeah, that's right. I wanted to follow the, a, a path that someone else cut with their faith. Like I didn't want, I didn't want to know my own path. I wanted to know theirs. And I also had another revelation in that moment. I realized that even if that teacher had given me a precise roadmap, I don't know about you, but I'm a, a Jersey girl with a will that is like twice the size of, of you know, United States. And I will, I will not go the way that you tell me. So this teacher couldn't win anyhow, you know, if she gave me a roadmap or a reprimand, I was still not, I still needed to follow my own soul. I still needed to follow my own interpretations. So that's what we all must do. We all must go and find the tools that work for us and go directly to your divine. Do not pass go, do not stop for interpretations from a middleman, go directly. And you, you can take a class and you could take a meditation class or a prayer class or a chanting class. All of that is good, but sometimes, after you've taken a certain number of classes, sometimes the studying of something can prevent us from the experience of something. And so we get stuck on trying to get more as opposed to just let it settle and experience it. Uh, there's a great quote by Mark Twain and he says, and I love this, he says, we have not the reverent feeling for the rainbow that a savage has because we know how it's made. And we've lost as much as we've gained by prying into that matter. So what he's basically saying is don't try and overanalyze your God. Be in awe of it. Don't be the most educated kid on the God block, you know, be the one who's still struck by awe. Sometimes our egos have a studying tools not to get closer to God, but to say that we have credentials. You know, we master the process and we learn all the chords and the scales, but then we never really allow ourselves to play with God. We come at the tools from an adult mind instead of a child's mind. And Jesus directs us to be like children. So early and often, often also means start now. Like don't wait till you're an old man and all the sand is running out of your hourglass. And don't wait till all your T's are crossed and don't wait to just start now romancing your relationship with God. If you leave God last, you will meet with a very unhappy hour. The other day on our prayer calls, we had um, somebody brought up that song, The Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon, which is such a great song and such a sad song. And it's such a sad song before, because the father in the song, he like goes off and makes time doing all kinds of stuff, but he doesn't make time for the most important stuff. And so all of us feel at the end of that song, just heartbreaking. So don't wait, don't put the divine on the back burner. Also, 
when thinking about starting early, like start your children early. I was talking to Reverend um, Jennifer before we started about my daughter, Billy. She started teaching yoga when she was 17, but really, I mean, I remember we had a silly deck of yoga posing cards when, when they were kids and they would take the cards out and they would get their yoga mats at and they would just play around with it. They would just play around with spiritual tools. So, you know, when it comes to your children, like teach them and they don't wait to teach them don't wait to tell them and, and don't wait till they're old enough to let them know that god loves them and that god lives within them and god's available for them teach them about their own innate power and perfection and give them the tools of prayer and meditation and chanting and, and, and yoga or whatever other tools you might have at your disposal but expose them to all the different practices in the same way that you would expose them to different cultures and food so early and often off also means starting in the morning and as soon as you get up because the ego speaks first and loudest and you got to get up early to get the spiritual worm. <laughs> I said that twice today and every time I say it, I go, who wants a spiritual worm? <laughs> that's like, Ugh. but you know what I mean? So, um, so that's what early can look like. You know, I, we heard um, earlier today from another woman who was saying, as soon as she opens her eyes, she looks around the room and she greets everything. And maybe you do something like that. For me, as soon as I wake up, I try and fling myself off the bed onto my knees, you know, to get to start right on my knees and start with, I start with a third step prayer, but um, to get into spiritual practice right away, you know, because it, it really will start your day off on a harmonious note. So often, when we say early and often, what does often mean? Well, often means exactly what you might think it means. It means to give yourself a thousand grace periods throughout your day. And even one minute of contemplation and a few deep breaths can really change everything. And you already know this. Even taking a short mantra throughout your day, like we're directed to do in A Course in Miracles. But if you're not a student of A Course in Miracles, you can use any mantra, you know, God is, or all things are working in my favor. I'm in a romantic relationship with the divine. And as you practice the affirmations throughout your day and the other spiritual tools throughout your day, they'll begin to under, underline a humming in your life. And this humming is, you know, your spiritual well-being. It's the, it's the soundtrack to your spiritual well-being. So begin to savor this humming and slip off to it like you would a good book or a, any kind of guilty pleasure and savor your connection. You know, so often I hear, especially with the Course in Miracles, like, I, and I came to it this way too. I was like, I just want to get it done. You know, I started doing the, the videos for a Course in Miracles seven years ago and I thought, I'm going to just, I'm going to get these done in a year. Seven years later, I'm still on 170. You know what I mean? First time I went through the lessons, it took me seven years. I didn't kid myself to think that I was going to get through it, you know, in one year the first time. I didn't think that that was even possible, but it's not a race. You know, it's not a race. It's about savoring it. Don't gobble it down just to get it over with. That's not a spiritual practice and that's not the optimal way of coming to a spiritual practice. I met a woman, you know, uh, maybe you've met her too. She's around. You'll see her if you're in the Course in Miracles circles. Um, she told me, oh yeah, I read that book. <laughs> and I thought, what the heck does that mean you read the book? You know, this isn't a book to read. This is a book you get baptized by, you know. A Course in Miracles is not a ple pleasurable read. <laughs> it makes you work. It's a spiritual workout and it repeats itself, you know. <clears throat> So that's the thing. All spiritual tools repeat themselves. You know, that's the thing that it's a very repetitive thing to have a spiritual tool and to use it. Uh, but repetition doesn't mean that you're dumb or thick. It just means that the ego is diligent. And so repetition is important. So early and often and hungry, come hungry to your practice. Because when you come hungry, you're gonna get there early, you're gonna show up and you're gonna sit in the front row, all right? I remember, you know, being raised with eight kids in my family. My mom would take all day to cook. And when she rang the bell, it was like, you got to get there or you ain't going to get any. <laughs> so come hungry and come not just to get fed, but to help feed. When I was in the 12 step program, and when I go to the 12 step program, when I started the 12 step program, um, that was a place where I learned that you don't show up just to get. You know, you go, you show up to be of service, you know, so you become the greeter or you hold the door open or you become the secretary. There's lots of different roles, but these are just symbolic ideas for how to work a spiritual practice. 
like to to work it to have it be of support to others as well so um so allow yourself allow yourself to work it to the point where you are able to extend it as well because we're all spiritual teachers here we're all lighthouses we're all way showers we're all healers and it's a very a very impressive time right now for all of us to get fully lit fully lit up so that we can be of service my one of my favorite teachers my favorite gurus is rupaul and rupaul says if you can't love yourself how the hell are you going to love anybody else so you know these spiritual practices help us to love ourselves a good spiritual practice whatever it is for you will carve your plans and your agendas and your opinions away and a good spiritual practice whatever it is for you will polish the patina of your ego and a good spiritual practice whatever it is for you will make you like a hot knife through butter and reveal that shining state of divinity that dwells within you and we don't want to use these spiritual practices to master the practice but we want to use these spiritual practices so that we can master peace so we can be like masterpieces like god's masterpieces walking the world you don't want to use the tool of prayer and meditation to become a master meditator but to have something more extraordinary than that more extraordinary than you could even put words on we want to be able to set our foot on holy ground and experience the bliss of the present moment and they want to give those tools the opportunity to allow us to step onto a platform of peace and hold our own so what does a platform of peace look like is it like that slab of cement in your father's backyard that's been pressed with fingerprints of innocent children it sounds as beautiful as that right but it's actually even more beautiful than that if you can imagine it's beyond words true gifts of spiritual tools cannot even be defined by words kyle gabron says words murder thoughts so these rituals take us past words into what's real and what's real is love i want to close with one piece from lesson 123 123 from a course in miracles paragraph 6 it says thanks be to you who heard for you became the messenger who brings his voice with you and lets it echo round and round the world receiving the thanks of god today as you give thanks to him for he would offer you the thanks you give since he receives your gifts in loving gratitude and gives them back a thousand and a hundred thousand more than they were given and he will bless your gifts by sharing them with you and so they grow in power and in strength until they fill the world with gladness and gratitude. So this is the direction that we're headed in. And you might ask one final question, how often do you use these spiritual tools? Will you use them all the time and until you embody them? We pray until our life becomes a prayer. We chant until our life becomes a song. We meditate until we become the sweet stillness of peace. We serve until our actions become the dance. And we know when we've arrived, you will find that you have held on to nothing and somehow through the grace of God, you've been given everything, which is really the miracle. When our spiritual tools finally carve us all the way back to God. That's the word. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you so much. That was so inspiring. I am so glad you said yes and you are available today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit uh, inspired by what you just shared. And <clears throat> you said so many powerful and valuable things. And what struck me is one of the most important things for us now more than ever is to realize that A Course in Miracles is it's such an extraordinary teaching, uh, and meaning that it really is unique among teachings uh, because it tells us 
that we're already awakened, we're already enlightened, we're already there. I like to say it this way, we're already as holy as holy can be. And what using the spiritual tools does for me is it, it reminds me that I'm already there and I don't have to be managing and coping with this world. I can rise above it. I can rise above projections and perceptions. I can remember to laugh each and every moment, no matter what. And I do that by saying, I don't know what anything is for. I'm never upset for the reason I think. Everything works together for my good. I'm responsible for what I see and for how I feel. And everything is just as I wish it would be. And all the different uh, beautiful sayings there are in A Course in Miracles that remind us that we're already there, we're already there, we're already there. And that is, I think, for many of us, the challenging thing is just to accept the atonement for ourselves, to accept that there is no separation, never has been and never will be, and to really allow our mind to release any sense of separation. I know it sounds like the same old, same old, but it's not, it's not. It's really incredibly profound. And our spiritual tools whittle away the attachments we have to the world we made and, and our perception of it. So, uh, and, and I loved what you shared about teaching your children from the beginning and sharing with them from the beginning as well. I, I thought of some friends of mine, they, uh, when their daughter was about four years old, they were all driving in the car and their daughter was in the back seat, they were in the front seat. And uh, of course she was in her little car seat and, um, she uh, she heard her parents arguing and they were arguing and arguing. And then she interrupted them and she said, guys, guys, can we all just think about God? And what a gift, right? To have taught your, your child this, so that your child can remind you. And then I think of another story of that same child, uh, oh, a few years later. And there was, uh, they were all out on the playground at school. And there was one kid who got into a fight and was uh, having this fight and hitting and uh, this huge upset. And um, this little girl, she went over to the picnic table and she put her head down on the table. And she was like this with her head in her hands. And the teacher came over and said, honey, are you all right? What's going on? Are you okay? And she said, I'm just praying to, for Johnny to remember that he's a good person. And these, 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 this beautiful, precious holiness is within each and every one of us. And starting our day remembering that is the most powerful tool that we have and to forget all the stuff that we've made up about ourselves. That's the goal of the day, to forget everything that we made important that's not important, to forget everything that we made valuable that's actually not valuable. So I'm going to invite everybody here to join me as we go within and let's, let's do a little healing here or big healing here. And I always like to place my hands on my heart to remind myself that I'm not paying lip service. I'm wholehearted. And let's just take a breath together. We've got people all over the world and we're, we're broadcasting on Facebook. So we have even more people there. And so this is powerful that we've come together to change our mind about the world, to change our mind about ourselves. We've come together for the purpose of remembering the truth. And when we remember the truth about anyone, we remember the truth about everyone because we are one. And so the invitation right now is for each and every one of us to be willing to remember that we're already perfect 
and we are already as holy as holy can be. The Course of Miracles, the voice of Jesus tells us that we cannot become any more holy than we already are. And if it's true for us, then it has to be true for anybody that we don't like or don't approve of. And now remembering our own holiness requires that we see our brothers and sisters correctly. This is the greatest spiritual tool. Our brothers and sisters are our salvation. Of Course in Miracles makes this so clear. So in this moment together, being the two or more gathered in the name and the nature of love, we're cultivating the willingness to see all of our brothers and sisters holiness and to make no exceptions. As Faith sang, we, we all get lost along the journey. And our job is to help each other back. And so if there's anybody in your life that has forgotten their holiness, that seems lost along the journey, and maybe there's somebody that seems to have gotten lost along the journey and you're fearful for them, you're worried about them, maybe you're angry at them. Maybe you think they're a horrible person. Or maybe you're just angry with them, annoyed with them. See if you can think of people in your life who might fit into these categories. And maybe in this moment, it is too challenging or we're not completely willing to see their perfection, their wholeness, their holiness. But we're willing to be willing at least. Remembering that our salvation lies in our being willing to see and know the truth about all of our brothers and sisters. One of the greatest gifts that we can share in this world is a willingness to see the holiness in our brothers and sisters and to Relinquish any desire to see anyone punished ever for anything. We can give up the desire to see anyone punished or reprimanded. And in doing so, we will be free of thinking that we should be punished or that we are being punished. Because we're one with each other, where one goes, we all go. So let us go to the light and remember that love is what we are and love holds no grievances. And so for the ultimate liberation, we must forgive ourselves for having the most exquisite spiritual tools 
and leaving them in a bottom drawer, leaving them out in the rain, forgetting where we left them, forgetting that we had them. We can forgive ourselves for traveling around the world and investing thousands and thousands of dollars for spiritual tools that we put in a box in the corner and forgot all about. Now is the only moment there is. Now is the appointed time. So now is the time of our healing. And this is what we are choosing. So we are grateful and thankful to open our hearts to true forgiveness and to release any judgments, any attack thoughts that we hold against ourselves and others. We're partnering up with that higher Holy Spirit self in order to get it done. We are willing. That is all that is required. We have it. And so we can say together, and so it is. Amen. 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 So I'm going to turn it over to Lori here for a minute, and then we're going to have another song from Faith. And then we have uh, something extraordinary to offer after that. So. Thank you, Jennifer. That was so beautiful. And thank you, Maureen and Faith. It's like, woo, it's the Holy Trinity we get to witness today with these beautiful women. One of the, um, how many people here really appreciated the message about the spiritual tools? Yeah. So timely, so, so perfect. And I know that when I started my spiritual journey, I was living paycheck to paycheck. And I remember going to a class with Jennifer and one of the things that she shared about a spiritual practice was the concept of, it was a concept I had never thought of before. I was like, huh? And she mentioned it and it was tithing. And so I remember listening to the class and she talked about how when we put it out, it comes back to us. We're not giving to get, it's just see what happens. And I thought, huh, I'm gonna start doing this. And that was about six years ago. And I started doing that and my income tripled. So that is a regular spiritual practice I have right now. And even during this time when everybody's been in quarantine, um, I haven't had a worry about abundance or about money. And I still keep giving and I keep receiving and it was just this moment of turnaround. And it's such an easy practice for me. The other day, one of my friends said, Lori, did you realize that it's not just monetary that you can, you can give, you can give time, you can volunteer for something. And I had never thought of it like that. So there was another area I was shown that, um, could possibly become a spiritual practice for me. So yes, I get up in the morning and I meditate and I do prayer and I do contemplation and I do journaling and I also do tithing. And the reason I'm bringing this up right now is because I have the honor of working behind the scenes in the ministry. And I see when we do something beautiful like this, how many lives we touch and also how many people are behind the scenes making sure that this happens for everybody. So last week I, I approached Jennifer and I said, you know, I would like to just speak for a moment to everybody and um, about tithing and also give 
invite people to have the opportunity to start a tithing practice or to continue it by donating towards the service, towards Sundays with Spirit. Because what that does is it, it helps um, support the people that are coming to speak. It helps support us behind the scenes, but it also helps support a spiritual practice. So it's just perfect that this came up today. And what I'd like to do is put the link to donate if you choose, and it's completely voluntary. So it's completely up to you. I'd like to put the link in the chat right now. And if you feel led, click on it and choose to support Sundays with Spirit. And, or you can just go into some meditative silence and Faith is going to play another one of her beautiful songs for us. So thank you, everybody.
Yay. Yay. Yes. We are rock stars. We are all rock stars. It's true. We're spiritual rock stars. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I, I know that song well. I was so happy to hear it again. So beautiful. Oh. I, uh, so we're going to do something that's unusual, but you know, the thing, this is what we can do uh, to help ourselves. And one of the things I know as someone who's been teaching classes for a long time, leading retreats for a long time, is that we can say things and share things that are inspiring, wonderful, and what is really powerful and what really anchors it in is when the participants can also share, when they can also share something from their own heart uh, and listen to each other. So what we do that's kind of unique here is we're going to do a breakout for the people who are on Zoom. People who are on Facebook, you can't do the breakout, but that's okay. And um, so we're going to do a breakout and then come back for uh, some more prayer and another song. And in the breakout, uh, if you're not familiar with breakouts, it's fun. In, in our classes in the Power of Love ministry, we do a lot of breakouts and they are much loved because it's a chance for you to really anchor your intention, anchor your heart and say what you got from this message, what your inspiration is, and you anchoring that, it really makes a difference. And the other thing is, you, you may not feel like sharing, but maybe you can just listen in a supportive way in the breakout. So there's no rule in the breakout, except for we practice total non-judgment and compassion. So compassionate listening, we never get enough practice of that. Compassionate listening, and I'm going to give you a topic to discuss. And so in your breakout, I'm going to invite you to just share any self-forgiveness that maybe you can offer up and your, your breakout partners can just be a gentle, compassionate witness to anything where you could say something along the lines of, you know, I had these spiritual tools, but I haven't been using them. And I'm going to forgive myself right here and right now. I'm going to have compassion for myself right here and right now that I've had this wonderful tool or tools that I haven't used. And yet I've been complaining that I'm not happy or complaining that this is not how I wish it would be. And that because we all, even the most dedicated prayer practitioners, we've got things that bother us that we don't bother to put in, on, into prayer. It's just how we are right? We're having a human experience. So, and then the other thing that you could share is some way you're going to apply one of the tools you have in a, a new way. So just a short share for each person in the breakout groups, and you don't have to go to the breakout group, but I encourage you to go, even if all you feel like doing is listening and being supportive and compassionate with the other folks in the breakout. So we're gonna to go to breakouts now, and then we're gonna come back and have more song and prayer, and then we'll close it out. All right, so Lori's gonna lead us into that breakout, and thank you, Lori. Sure, I'm gonna unmute everybody, and I'm gonna open up all the rooms for you. There should be a button that comes up that says the host is inviting you to join a room. And if you have any questions, I will be here to answer them. Hey, don't go to the breakout. Okay. <laughs> So if you can't find your breakout room, look on the bottom bar. If you're on your computer, look on the bottom bar. There, You'll see the breakout there. But if it didn't pop up on your screen, you can find it usually on the um, toolbar where it says breakout. New glitter dish. You like my new glitter dish? I do. I think it's really cool. 
And maybe, uh, Lori, the folks who are here who haven't gone to the breakout, maybe we can meet those folks right now. All right, Jennifer, I unmuted you, but everybody else is muted, and I am going to go answer a question in a breakout room. Okay. And uh, I am. I don't see Maureen. I think she left, and maybe she'll come back. So I was going to talk with her, but she's gone. <laughs> um. She is actually in the room I assigned you to go in with her. So if you go into it, you can tell her to come. You can go into it with her if you'd like to talk to her. Oh, she'll come back. Okay. Maybe. All right. I had sent you a uh, message that I guess you didn't see about not going to the breakout. No, so yeah. I thought that the three of us could talk uh, and uh, for the folks who are on Facebook who can't go to the breakout. And I'll just make a mention here for the folks on Facebook. If you, um, if you register, we need to have you register because uh, Zoom has had some security issues, so we need to have people register. And uh, if, if you're on Facebook, if you register for that, then you'll get a reminder and you'll get all the information for next Sunday. So you can do that uh, at livingacourseofmiracles.com forward slash Sunday, Sundays. Yeah. And I'm sure the link is right there on Facebook somewhere. Um, so, uh, in the time that we have, uh, I would love to ask uh, Maureen, uh, can you share some, and I'll have you share a little bit with the whole group, so you don't have to share right in this minute about it, but I'd like to ask you to just tell us a little bit about Speakeasy before we um, close out. And uh, I also would like to just ask you while we're in this breakout time, so how is your spiritual practice? How is your spiritual community? How are things different for you during this time of lockdown or quarantine or whatever we want to call it? And I think, I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Um, yes, there you go. Well, um, you know, it's kind of crazy, but um, not too much has changed for me personally, except for that there's more people in my house. Um, I used to work from my home and do a lot of stuff virtually. And so when the lockdown happened, we just actually, we moved a few things that were in person. So we have like, I produced a, a, a storytelling night once a month with Kathy Richardson. So we moved that virtually. So like that type of thing has changed, but not too much else has changed, but I guess, the, but there has been an overall, an overall shift, which is just, I feel like, like now is the time to be more grounded. Like when you were talking earlier about, I was saying, hey, you could do a yoga class with my daughter. And you're like, enough with the technology. Like there, there, it seems like I really want to still engage with people, but it's, I feel like the universe is literally saying like, do that when you need to do that, but stop, like really try and stop being busy, 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 which is pretty hard for me to do, to tell you the truth. I'm a creative. I love to create and I love people. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I like to engage, but, um, so those have been some minor and major shifts in my house. Uh, yeah. And I think it's always a call to God. It's always a call to God. I mean, there's, that's, that's never changing with whether it was cancer or divorce or something magnificent and amazing. It's always, this is focus on God. This is for you to focus on God. So that hasn't changed. Yeah. 
Yep. Lori. Yeah, uh, I, I know. Hang on. Hang on. Just give me a moment. Um, yeah, because I was made the de facto host there. Um, okay. Thank you. How long would you like everybody in the breakout for? Uh, 20 minutes. You got it. From the beginning. Yeah. What about you, Faith? Uh, well, I, this has been an interesting time for me. I can really say that. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate what Maureen had to say. She's a creative and I am too. And I've been creating all kinds of stuff going into this um, quarantine. And so I just kept creating and I found myself actually getting busier. And I had to ask myself, like I'm asking myself right now, like, what is that about? Why do you want to be so busy? You know, yeah. and um and I'm not sure what the answer is, but I know that there's some 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 introspection there for me, you know, to go in and kind of look at that because um, I'm certainly doing my spiritual practice, and that's been a really constant for me with this. Um, I'm I find it a little bit difficult to connect with people all of the time through the computer screen, especially when I'm coaching something like voice or you know acting or something like that, because that's a such a you know. A vibrational thing and we don't get the vibration that's the one thing i find is we don't get vibration through the through the um screen that we normally get when we're in someone's you know we're in the same room with each other so i'm i'm adapting to that and um and i'm and i have made a new commitment and intention for myself to really do a lot more self-care especially now That's great. I'll tell you, I I have been just working. Yeah. And fortunately, I love my work. I work for God Incorporated. You know, I work for this ministry, this nonprofit organization. And it is, we have um, really been just making huge leaps. We started a prayer ministry and uh, we are praying uh on on zoom every three hours uh around the clock every three hours we have a prayer session and uh it is potent it's so potent we have a whatsapp group for the people who are in the classes right now so we've got people all over the world and uh i i hear the whatsapp go off all throughout the day, ding, 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 ding. And it's like, I, I've decided that that sound means I love you. And so I hear it, I love you, I love you too. I love you more, I love you, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up in the morning and it's ding, 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 ding when I turn on my phone for the people who've been praying during the night while I was sleeping wow. and, and just blessing each other, people posting prayer requests. And so it. I, I what I've seen is that a lot of spiritual students are doing what I think this time is for. I think this time is for deepening our spiritual connection and spiritual practice and coming out from among them. And I, I hear, you know, on, I like to watch some of the late night talk show guys. Like uh, I, I like to watch Stephen Colbert and I like to watch um, Seth Meyers. I, I like their monologues. And um, remembering to laugh about things is really important to me. And uh, they're, I think they're clever. And um, I'll hear them talk, some of them talk about binge watching and they've watched everything on Netflix. And I think, wow, that is so not my experience. And uh, I, I, in, in fact, I, I think maybe I could find some time for that. And I've been mostly alone. I was a week with my family and now I'm up at our family house in Maine. And so I'm spending a lot of time in the gardens, getting the gardens ready because spring is starting to spring here. It comes later than it does in other places. And so uh, I, I'm actually incredibly impressed by how much spiritual growth and expansion I feel happening in humanity at this time that uh, so many people who are with their families 
are really enjoying that extra time with their families and cooking together and, and doing new things together that they haven't done. And of course, a lot of people are working out their relationship stuff. They're realizing this is their relationship um, curriculum is happening right now. And uh, they are, uh, and, and of course, not everybody's having this experience. I, I, Faith and I, we have a, a dear friend who was in the hospital for two weeks with COVID. And uh, I was concerned that we might lose him. And, uh, and that was really, you know, that was scary. That was scary for sure. And a lot of people have lost loved ones. A lot of people have been really scared. And what I know is A Course in Miracles tells us that when we live from our loving heart, we're invulnerable. So we might be in experiences that are scary for others, but we don't have to be scared because we're putting our trust and faith in spirit and recognizing that this is not our, you know, this, this life is not all there is by a long shot. And so these kinds of experiences, some would say they test our faith, but I think they reveal our faith. And that's part of what this time is for. It's for revealing where do we place our faith? Do we place it in our opinions? Do we place it in the news? Do we place it in doctors? Do we place it in spirit? Where are we gonna place our faith? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I find for me too, it's, um, yeah, it, it's instead of challenging, I feel like it's strengthening mm -hmm. and it's strengthening. And, one of the most wonderful things I've noticed is how meditation is just popping up everywhere, you know, and, and among communities that you would be surprised. Yeah, you know, they were interviewing um, the rapper 50 Cent and they said, what have you been doing? He said, well, I have been meditating. <laughs> so I feel like this, like you said, this is the time for change in the world, time for people to, all of us, to get back to um, to, to our this like 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 Maureen so said so beautifully in her talk about this uh, this this romance with God this connection with God with who we are with our spirit and move and make and move from that space move you know make our decisions and uh, and our actions from that space yeah. because that is where life gets really beautiful yeah yeah I love what Rev uh, Reverend Jennifer spoke about with families hanging out together and creating things, you know, like I mentioned, like my son has a sewing machine, like who knew <laughs> that that would be a thing. And, you know, we played games and we did some painting and it's not, I, I, I know it's on the backdrop of some people's suffering and I understand that, but also like, you know, uh, this is also what's happening at the very same time. Lots of families are, and I go out to the forest preserve and there's a lot more people walking and I overhear conversations of like, wow, this was here or I really love it being here. And it's, it's like reintroducing us to the simpler artisan aspects of our, you know, of our, of our, of ourselves, you know? And I, I think we all crave that. I love that. Precisely. You know, I have this uh, mug. Can you read that? Yes. My worries are few because my blessings are many. Yeah. And uh, this is my favorite mug in this house. And uh, so that's how I feel is that I'm accepting my blessings. I'm putting my attention on my blessings. And all the blessings are, are truly the gifts of God that we can be compassionate, that we can be forgiving, that we don't have to hold grudges and grievances. We don't have to think, oh, I hope they get theirs. And, and we don't have to have any of those thoughts. We truly can let them go. And we have practices from A Course in Miracles of how to let them go, how to let the grievances and the grudges dissolve and resolve permanently back to the root cause. And it works. It really works. The, I loved so much, Maureen, that you shared about um, taking seven years to go through the workbook lessons. That's so powerful. Um, 
do you know, have you ever heard of the teacher, Tim Davis? No. Not Tim Davis, Nick Davis. I have a friend named Tim Davis, and I always say that. Nick Davis, he's he's a Brit, and I'm going to get uh, ask him if he'd like to do one of these Sundays. He has a group that they, um, gosh, the, the the I heard him talking about this back in 2014. Yeah, 2014, and they were they were doing the lessons one a week <clears throat> as a group. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason it took me seven years is because I was holding a pretty heavy crucifixion towards my former husband. So I had a lot of weight on my hands. I had my hands busy with other things, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's no rush. There's no rush. There's no race. That's it. Yeah. Don't put the ego in charge of your spiritual practice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? It's such a temptation. It's mm -hmm. such a temptation. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Faith knows we have a mutual friend, Reverend Jesse, and uh, when Jesse and uh, uh, first started coming into my classes and things, and we went to something at Agape, and, and there were a whole bunch of practitioners who were praying, and uh, Jesse said it seemed almost like um, for a moment that some of the practitioners were on some kind of a, a game show called, so you think you can pray. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> like... <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so, it's so good to be able to laugh at all the, the games the ego plays, especially in the spiritual world where we have uh, spiritual teachers that get mad at each other and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, we're just all having a human experience. And the thing is to to forgive it all at the same time, being very clear about what works for you and what doesn't work for you, you know? Right. Yeah. And I remember like even the share, story I shared about that, my, my who was my teacher at that time, like for a little while, I, of course, I was like, I thought about that. I played the victim role. And then when I got to, you know, to take it to the Holy Spirit and say, what was the purpose of this? I mean, gosh, you can get there faster and faster and faster each time. And the purpose, once you find out the purpose by the Holy Spirit's written by the Holy Spirit's hand, it just makes so much sense. And it's always a blessing. So it's, you know, so yeah, we're going to rub up against each other, but only to polish our egos off, you know, and that's mm -hmm. not a bad thing to have happen. <laughs> you know, so... Constant polishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the song, Faith, about um, Rolling River God? Oh, gosh. I, I almost pulled that song out to do today. I just haven't done it on the guitar, but I can, it's such a great song. You know, it's like the um, uh, oh, little stones are smooth only when, you know, only once the water rushes through, passes through. Mm. So my, so there, so I am a stone rough and um remember the words rough rough and something still yeah trying to reconcile this river's chill <laughs> right but when i close my eyes you know and i connect to god then i know that that i'm being polished as a stone really yeah that. 25 years ago i would hear that song and uh, I would sing it in the car, yeah. uh, sing it along with folks, uh, recordings from folks singing it at Agape. I remember it was at Bridget Bryant. Yeah. Oh, she just sang the heck out of that song. She did. And, uh, and Carl Anderson too. And I'd sing along in the car in tr LA traffic and I just tears rolling down my face, you know? Yeah. That someday, you know, the river will smooth away all the rough edges and I'll be free. But in the meantime, you know, it's just what I'm doing. It's just what I'm doing. I'm in process and that's okay. Jennifer, we have about a minute and a half left. And I just realized that it wasn't set up to record automatically. Would you like me to record the rest? You know, we've got the Facebook Live, so I think we'll have that. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I realized that a while ago. So, thank you.
yeah, but we've got the Facebook Live recordings. Um, so we've got about a minute now before everybody comes back. And then uh, Faith, if you'll, you'll share another song. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, I'm just going to, I would like to just do a couple quick announcements. And uh, I'm going to ask Maureen to talk about um, her community. And, uh, and then Lori's going to close us out with a prayer. It's been really great, Jennifer. Yeah, it's been uh, great. Just wonderful. You know, the first Sunday that we did this, uh, I, I asked for the people who were here to raise their hands, you know, in, in um, Zoom, there's a raise hand function. And so I had asked everybody to, to raise their hand oh. if they were uh, in their quarantine, in their lockdown, whatever you want to call it. I tend to call it quarantine. Uh, are you alone in your quarantine? And fully half the people who were here were alone in their quarantine. So it's so great that we can come together and be in, in our spiritual connection and community together, uh, no matter what, no matter what, that we, we have the power to come together. And uh, all right, so, um, Faith, another song from Faith Rumor. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. I rest in thee. I rest in thee.
Yay. Thank you so much. You. Ah, my heart is so open. Thank you so, so much. People are saying they love it in the chat. And um, before we do our closing prayer, uh, Faith, I'm just going to start with you. Is there anything you'd like people to know about what you're doing, what's coming up for you that you can share? Um, yeah, actually, I'm still coaching online. I have some, um, some uh, I coach singing and voice and I coach um, actors as well. And so that's still going on if anybody's interested in doing either some kind of a course or uh, working with me individually, it's happening. And then I have a brand new course coming out. There's going to be an on like do it yourself online course for voice for speakers for all kinds of speakers, whether or not you just want to, in your own life, have a little better voice or that you're out there speaking and you want to have a more commanding and more, you know, the voice that feels more free and, and more, have more, you know, emotion to it and all of that. So that course is going to be coming up in the next month. I, I told you the other day when we were talking on the phone how glad I am that you're doing that course. I think so many people can benefit from that. And I just like to say my own personal experience of taking singing lessons from Faith and uh, working with her one on one and in a group, uh, tremendously beneficial, tremendously beneficial. She's she's really the real deal and she's been teaching in la with you know the la hollywood scene and and big movie stars and all of that for a long time and she's so down to earth and easy to work with and even she will make you feel like a rock star no matter <laughs> what your talent is she she will bring out the extraordinary levels of your magnificence and that is a fact so thank, thank you for that. Yeah. You. And, and you'll probably have a spiritual healing at the same time. Well, it is, you know, when you come, when you bring your inner rock star out, you get healed. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to come back again before too long. And I'm yep. so glad you were able to do this today for us. Okay. And Maureen, what, you can tell us about whatever you'd like to share and also about Speakeasy. So Speakeasy is our spiritual community that we've been running for the past seven or so years. It's in the uh, Hinsdale, Illinois area. And it's based on A Course in Miracles. We say love is our religion, care is our currency, and peace is our goal. So it's, it's a very um, unchurched church. And uh, we went virtual in, you know, a couple, about six weeks ago. And so now we're on live every morning, uh, Sunday morning at 1030. And uh, yeah, so it's just another uh, deep well to get some uh, spiritual inspiration from. We uh, don't have all the answers, but we love the questions. And we have a little conversation after each talk. And Kathy Richardson is a musical guest with us. And so she does a great job. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been really nice, actually, because where we were just able to serve the people in our area, up until six weeks ago, um, it's been, you know, the doors have been, you know, held open for more people to join us. So if you're, if you're interested, you can find us at 1030 on Sunday mornings. And um, other than that, we, uh, I teach writing. So I have writing courses going all the time. We start uh, fresh every month and our writing groups um, support storytellers to write their, their books, their stories, their sermons, whatever you're, whatever you're writing currently. And uh, that meets on Mondays. And you can find more about that at my website, MaureenMuldoon.com, where we got a lot of things going on. So, um, but I'm really grateful that I was able to come here today. And maybe you can come over to Speakeasy and give us a talk there sometime, Reverend Jennifer. I would love to do that. <laughs> I, I would love, love it. Yes. Um, and do you do one-on-one -on -one coaching because uh, for Course in Miracles students, or counseling? Yes, I, I do one-on-one -on -one and I do I do the, the lessons every day through Miracles Live 365. So that's a great community where we're, you know, we're all teachers and students and we do the lessons together and we contemplate how they're working in our lives. And that goes live twice a year in January and July. Um, so if you're interested in trying that out, but yeah, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. Again, it's, all, it's at MaureenMuldoon.com. Great, yes. Hey, can I, if they want to get a hold of me, they can get a hold of me through yes. 
uh, either theartistfirst.com, which is my website, but you can also email me at faith at theartistfirst.com. So those are two good ways to get a hold of me. Excellent. 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 Uh, so let's see if there's anything else. Uh, a lot of folks know about my podcast, my weekly podcast, uh, Course in Miracles. It's on the Unity Network, but you can find it anywhere you get a podcast. And uh, so this, this ministry is the Power of Love Ministry. And you can make donations at powerofloveministry.net, powerofloveministry.net. But we also have a ton of free stuff at livingacourseofmiracles.com and you can make donations there livingacourseofmiracles.com and we're going to have replays of this service so just like we have the Lisa Natoli and Jim Jimmy Twyman and uh, John Mundy was last week and so uh, with Renee Stahl and so we have all you know we're having an archive of the replays so you can if you're registered you'll get the information on how to get to the archive so that's a cool thing and um Oh, uh, we've just restarted the inspirational text messages. So you can sign up for that uh, at livingacourseofmiracles.com or acimtexts.com, acimtexts.com. So I love getting the inspirational texts. They, they, they're, uh, I, I often, I don't know what's coming that day. And so it just surprises me and delights me. And uh, the other day I was uh, annoyed with something and the text came and it said something like, you can always remember to choose love, Jennifer Hadley. And I'm like, <laughs> Jennifer Hadley is inspiring Jennifer Hadley to deepen her practice. And I just love that. So, and, and a big thank you to Lori uh, Gifford for holding down the fort here and GJ and uh, all the team at, at Power of Love Ministry who make it possible. And Lori's going to pray us out. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Oh. So I like to put my hand on my heart and settle in with a nice deep breath. So grateful for the time we have spent together, for the love that's been created for the love soup that we're all feeling part of. Grateful and thankful for remembering to be the artisans of our own lives, using our individual tools, our spiritual tools, sharpening them, using them in whatever way we choose to create a life filled with joy and peace and abundance and love building our platforms of peace and joy and freedom. Resting into that space, coming to it joyfully and hungrily, ready to have a date with God, ready to have our one-on-one -on -one time with spirit, ready to absorb all of that and share it with everyone in the world. Grateful for the Power of Love Ministry, for Jennifer, for Maureen, for Faith, for their gifts that they shared with us today. So grateful for our own opportunities to use our tools in the way that we, that feels right for us, not needing to be copy or a cutout of anybody else or a cookie cutter. We can do it the way that feels good for us. So grateful and thankful to offer all that energy up, taking that time regularly and throughout our days to join with our divinity and to share that divinity with everyone. And we share it gladly and lovingly. Amen. Amen, amen. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Laurie. Mwah.